All right, so one of the, uh, ew. Okay, this computer's dirty. We built it a long time ago. This is our editing rig. So we gotta get it all maintenanced up and cleaned up and some upgrades and stuff done to it. Otherwise we can't bring you this video because this is the computer would be made on. So we're gonna do that. Oh, and also he's getting a tiny little upgrade while we're at it. He has an old 2080 Ti in here. So we're just gonna put a little 3080. The all new 5000D mid-tower airflow case from Corsair features an optimized front panel for maximum ventilation, while the integrated cable management and tempered glass side panel means you can show off more of your components and not your cable mess. To see the full list of specs and to learn more about the 5000D's flexible fan mounting options perfect for both air cooling and water cooling enthusiasts, follow the sponsored link in the description below. All right, so we're gonna be cleaning this system out. Uh, it has not been de-dusted. De-dust, I like the dust <laughs> the dust too. Uh, here's what we're gonna be doing. We're also gonna be changing out the graphics card, like I said, and I'm kind of debating right now if we're gonna drain this fluid out, because I could change the card without draining the fluid, but because he said that he used to render in the 70s, um, you know, disco era, no, bad joke. Since it used to render in like the 70, mid 70s uh, Celsius, now it's hitting the 80s. We think maybe it's time to repaste it. The nice thing is I did put a drain plug in here, which is nice. I don't always do that. And when I do, it does make things a heck of a lot easier. We took a lot of flack from people that are like, why aren't you using rigid? Rigid's better. It's like, because I can actually undo the CPU block and take it off and just have this tubes dangling around and be fine. But you know, the internet, they always wanna want you to do it their way. And they get, oh, almost dropped the glass. They want you to do it their way. And if you don't, they get all mad, so. That's the dirt alarm. I said when we built this, because it was our editing rig, some people are already like, if it's an editing rig, why is it even water cooled? Well, because again, this is Jay's two freaking sense channel. And I water cool all the things, but I digress. There's enough flex on this tubing to where I'll be able to actually get the block out of the way. There we go. See? Ew. Yeah, I think we can do better. And I think we're gonna use KPX for obvious reasons. Threadripper uses like some regular tubes of thermal paste is not enough. It's just so ridiculously big. Not something I'm accustomed to hearing. Dude, I want, this will probably use so much of what's left in my KPX tube. Surgeon's hands. <laughs> I'm squeezing <laughs> it so hard. Oh, tell me. You would have drawn a nice controlled X. <laughs> You're making fun of me, tell me. It's like you're icing a cake with this. All right, so I, I just personally find that pre-spreading the compound on Threadripper is just, oh, as you smoosh it all around like that, is the better way to go. I bet you with the KPX pre-spread pre like this, I bet you you're gonna see a temperature reduction quite a, you know, quite a bit. Hey, young, 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 All right, a little rule of thumb when it comes to drain ports here. If the valve is perpendicular, that means it's blocked. If you turn it and it's parallel, that means it has flow. So if you always wanna know if it's closed or not, Make sure the knob is perpendicular to the fitting and then you won't go leaking coolant everywhere. So I just take another fitting and another scrap piece of tube. I attach it to my knob. <laughs> oh, this one's gonna be a little bit too short. The knob's too short. Nope, oh, that's perfect right there. And then the other thing you're gonna have to do is open up an inlet for air to get into the reservoir up top. That's why I always use these multi-port reservoirs so air can go in, air can go out. Now watch this. And we're peeing. Now I'm not planning on doing like a really thorough flushing on this because this coolant isn't dirty at all. It's glycol based coolant, which means I can add more glycol um, to it. So I'm just gonna let physics kind of work itself right now over time. Like if we just wait a couple minutes, it'll end up moving to the reservoir again and it will, it will come out. Um, the other thing you can do to also help promote that is close your drain again, tilt it over the table, always sketchy. It's always a favorite of mine. Kind of rotate it a couple different directions. We also need to get obviously the coolant out of these tubes right here where the graphics card is because we're gonna be changing out that graphics card, like I said. Let's show you the card we're gonna be using. This is the EK Water or the, the GeForce RTX EK Water Blocks 1080. Um, I almost said TI from ASUS. So it's 1080, actually. 1080? Wow. Yeah, 3080. Geez, we went backwards, didn't we? So you know the elusive like reference PCB? The one that's not a founders, but it's just a reference spec. That's essentially what this is, if you want to know the truth. 
This is just a reference base card. Look how look at those little starter points. That's how you know they're good. So this is just a reference base card with an EK water block on it. Look how much more, look how much smaller it is than the 2080 Ti. You're gonna gain even more room in here, Phil. As if I needed more. I know. <laughs> so we'll set that aside. Um, oh, it's also a single slot. That's kind of nice. So because I'm not getting anything to move here because we have a double rad set up, something we can do is we can actually just flip it on its face like this. Actually, before we do that, why don't we go ahead and put this cap back on the reservoir? <laughs> because we'd have had ourselves an amateur moment. We'd have had like a Kyle video. I'm not saying Kyle's an amateur. I'm referring to the one that he turned on his loop with the fitting off and it splashed everywhere, okay? Chill. <laughs> but Kyle's also an amateur. We still have a little bit of coolant right there we gotta deal with, but what I would do is I would actually just have a whole bunch of paper towels under my hand and I would loosen that and let it drip on the paper towel. People are gonna be like, you, he's putting bacteria in there. Just slow your roll. The coolant we use is also an antibacterial, okay? So now I basically have these tubes Empty, as you can see. You can see where the water level is on the block right there. So now I can safely go ahead and undo those tubes, which will allow me to be able to get the graphics card out. And I'm putting paper towels in here for obvious reasons, because no matter how hard you try or how good you think you are, you're gonna drip at some point. And as soon as you open and allow air into here, there's a likelihood that air could come out of somewhere else. Physics is weird. It does weird things and so, if you don't account for it, you can cause yourself some headaches, obviously. Yeah, I've seen water flow up, okay? <laughs> so my biggest concern right now is gonna be whether or not these tubes are still gonna line up to where this bridge is. And it looks like it is. Cause I have these tubes like perfect length to get the bends that we want. A lot of people might've also, oh, no. See what I mean? I also just remembered this RGB light is on there. And so it's wired in on the back. <laughs> He's putting it back. Well, yeah. Why should I hold it when the computer can? I'll be honest, I don't remember what the wiring looks like back here. We have two Commander Pros. That's not, oh, not terrible. I'll be able to find the one we're looking for. Now we've got this old 2080 Ti out of here that nobody cares about anymore. So I'm just moving these fittings over from one card to the other in the exact same, like the same plugs. Even though I do think we have the caps that come with the EK block. I'm just putting the Fantex one on there. It's just crazy to me how fast this card is versus the one we just took out and how small it is. But it's, it's like, oh look, we water cooled the 2060. <laughs> you know, that's what it looks like. I suffer from big card syndrome. If it's not a big card, it's slow. That's how you make the shirt. Yeah. And if you want it in white. <laughs> so one thing I want to point out too with the soft tubing, um, it has kind of a greenish color to it. So this is just part of the plasticizer and stuff that is in this tubing and that does happen over time. I've seen people comment like that their, their coolant's changing color and it could very well be your tubes changing color. You should be comparing it to anything inside acrylic like your reservoir or your block to determine what the color actually is. But soft tubing, that's a downside to it. It will always change color. If you look at it compared to the base of the Singularity uh, computer's, you know, really polished acrylic, you can see just how discolored this tubing is when it was just as clear when we started. But you got fluid running through it, it's gonna break down some over time. So there we go. That is all buttoned back up. Need to find the cap for that, stuck it somewhere. Upright this baby, get this wire pushed through. I don't think I have a header anywhere where I can plug this in. So Phil's gonna lose RGB on his uh, graphics card, but he doesn't care because this is a work computer. It's gonna look so small in here. Look at that. <laughs> it doesn't even make it to the end of the motherboard. It's like I'm the motherboard and Phil is the GPU in terms of size reference. <laughs> So another thing that really helps in obviously loop maintenance is having a fill port. If you can't easily get to the top of your reservoir, then you can run a pass-through fitting with a fill port here that is tubed right into one of the inlets on the uh, reservoir. Now that same tube that I showed you that I, or that port I undid earlier to let air in when we were trying to drain it also applies letting air out when you're filling it. 
So if you didn't have that, then the air would have to escape the same tube that you're using to fill, uh, and that can be kind of messy. So I just undo this one. I just make sure that the one that I'm pouring in, see how it's coming into this one on the inside and it's not coming to the top of this one because they're a T, like that's just drilled into the same hole. If you, have your, if you have your bleed on the same inlet, when you go to fill it, it's just gonna go out there as well because water always finds the path of least resistance. So you want it to be a separate port as much as possible. So what we're gonna go ahead and do now is we are going, I missed it twice. We're gonna fill this up and then we'll add our, our orange dye to it. You wanna fill slowly because you don't wanna overflow on the top here. Look at that. So we're just gonna fill our reservoir and then we didn't lose that much coolant outside of the reservoir. So we'll be able to just power it up and then top off our res afterward. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna plug in the power supply and uh, I need a power cord. Nick! There it goes. See, look at that, look at it go. Yay. See, that's, the block isn't full. So we'll have to obviously have to, there it goes. Go baby, go. You get an idea of just how much like force there is in that pump. So I'm gonna cap this off now. Cause what happens is when you turn off the system when it's running, oftentimes the level will rise. And if you have it filled up towards the uh, cap hole and you turn it off, then it can bleed out the cap. But I'm okay with leaving coolant in this tube or this tube right here, which I don't have any in right now, because then as the level comes down over time, because air is still like there's air right there, as you can see, there's probably air in the block down there. No, not really, because it's horizontal. There's gonna be air in the top rad. Then it will just fill itself with what's left in that tube. So let me turn this off. So this system, the system is down. The system is down. So we should be good to go here. This wire is kind of bugging me because I didn't really route it too pretty, but Phil doesn't care. It's a work computer. As you can see, the computer's booted up and it works just fine. Of course it is, I built it, you know? Anyway, moving on. Let's talk about temperatures here. Cause remember one of the reasons for this was not just, look, the, I put the 3080 in there cause I was like, while we're in there, we might as well, I'm gonna be draining it. So that's a perfect time to do it. But it was really the fact that he was seeing his temperature start to really creep up. Now remember we're using KPX, which is what we use for extreme overclocking and LN2 cause it stays pliable all the way down to like minus 160 degrees uh, Celsius. However, it's a perfect pace also for room temp stuff. So let's go ahead and uh, check out the temperature. So we got Ryzen Master open right here. We're idling at 37 to 40 C or so, 38, 39. But if we run Cinebench, which is definitely something that can pump some heat, take a look at our attempts. 57, 56, max our wattage, maxing our CPU power at 212 watts because it's got auto OC going. We're almost pulling all of our amps available, all of our EDC, all of our PPT. The temperatures are phenomenal because Getting the dust out of the air, out of the uh, heat exchangers or the radiators obviously did its job. We're at 43,212. And you got a nice fast graphics card on top of that. So as you guys could see, we probably spent what? If we weren't making a video, I could have probably done all of that in 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. I think we maybe spent 40 minutes out there while making a video because we planned. We have a drain uh, valve in there. We have a fill plug or a fill port that goes right into the reservoir. We have extra ports allowing us to get air out quickly and get air in quickly when we want to drain the loop. We use flexible tubing, that way we can move the parts out of the way and get to things that we need to service. So as you guys could see, the people that were giving us a hard time about why would you even water cool something if you need ultimate reliability? Well, this allows us to push our overclocks, which allows us to render our videos faster. Time is money when you're talking about the amount of hours that you render throughout the year. Serviceable, and uh, it didn't take much time to do it whatsoever. In fact, it probably would have been harder to get an air cooler in and out than that block because the block only takes four plug or four screws to get it out. Where an air cooler sometimes, like some of the Noctua's and stuff, you gotta take plugs off and undo this bracket and get this out of the way and it's kind of a pain in the butt. Uh, you would have to undo the wiring because of the fans. So yeah, this is uh, clearly why we do things the way we do around here. Anyway, if you guys have a tip for anyone that wants to do water cooling maintenance, uh, put it down in the comments below. What's your best tip or best practices when it comes to keeping your systems maintained and always running top notch? This is a good time to do this this time of year. Spring cleaning for your home and for your PC, especially if you live in a hot region going into the hot temps like we're about to, uh, we'll be doing this on all of our computers that are that have been built for a while. Actually, I think your computer is the oldest one that's still put together, Phil. So there you go. Thanks for watching guys and as always, We'll see you in the next one.